This is a 57-year-old uh, gentleman who presented with a non-ST segment elevation MI and continued chest discomfort and rising troponins. He's here for a cardiac cath to investigate his coronary anatomy. Little pinch and a burn, sir. So we are going to access the coronary arteries via the right femoral artery. We'll first numb up the, over the vessel. A little pressure, sir. A little pressure in the leg there, sir. All right, and we put a sheath into the femoral artery in order to pass the catheters. <clears throat> the first catheter that we place is called a pigtail catheter because of its shape. And we're going to measure pressures inside the heart and outside the heart. The pigtail catheter is now outside the aortic valve and we'll now cross the aortic valve to measure the left ventricular pressure retrograde here with the pigtail catheter. All right, we now have a catheter inside the heart, inside the left ventricle. Inject. We're going to look at the arteries that supply blood to the heart, the coronary arteries, using catheters that will select the coronary arteries. And we're going to start with the left. And so far, so good. All right. We're taking a picture of the left coronary artery and the left circumflex artery. The left, the left anterior descending coronary artery supplies blood to the top and the front of the heart. And the left circumflex supplies blood to the posterior portion of the heart or the back of the heart. All right, now we're going to look at the right coronary artery. Applies blood to the bottom part of the heart. So the right coronary artery is totally occluded, and he's been having symptoms intermittently for the last couple of days. <clears throat> so we're going to open up the right coronary artery. He's had uh, looks like a little bit of damage to the bottom part of the heart, which you see in this picture here, and that's the part of the heart that's supplied by the right coronary artery. So this gentleman has an occluded right coronary artery, which is r likely recent. His last prolonged episode of chest discomfort was today. So he's having ongoing discomfort. Um, he has a, a damage to the inferior or bottom wall of the heart, which suggests that he's in the process of having a, an, what we call a myocardial infarction or a heart attack. The left system looks fine. So we are going to go ahead and open up the uh, right coronary artery. So what we're first going to do is we're going to uh, access the right coronary artery with a special type of a catheter called a guiding catheter. Place a wire across the blockage and then pass a catheter w that will remove uh, clot from the vessel. In patients who have acute coronary syndromes or acute heart attacks, these are from, from clot and plaque. And so to make the artery ready for the stent, we need to withdraw uh, some of the clot. So we're going to do that with a specialized catheter first. Right now we're placing a guide catheter into the right coronary artery which is occluded. So on the bottom screen we're going to show, a, we're going to show the vessel as it is now that I could use for a road map and then we're going to improve that vessel to normal. So the first thing we need to do before we uh, place equipment into the artery is place a wire uh, manipulate a wire across the blockage in order to place all of our equipment. So we have a wire going into the artery here. Okay, so we've gotten the wire across the blockage. What we're going to do is place this catheter beyond the blockage if possible and then through the catheter with negative suction attempt to remove the clot that caused this artery to block suddenly this morning and then we'll take a look at the artery and see how it looks once we do all that. We're going to take a quick shot after the export catheter has been passed. Um, Go ahead. The question is, do you want the carotene? All right. So the artery's open. It just looks small. 
Okay, now that we've restored flow in the vessel, we're going to use a balloon to open up the artery and use some nitroglycerin to get rid of some of the spasm. So now with the balloon, we opened up the critical blockage, but we still see a lot of thrombus in the vessel past the blockage. So we're going to put what's called the export catheter back down and withdraw a little bit more clot from there. So after one pass with the export catheter and one inflation with the balloon, the arteries open and we're able to see beyond the blockage now and see what work needs to be done to restore blood flow through the artery. So now we're, we have the export catheter be way down the artery here, way below the blockage itself and we're withdrawing clot as we pull the catheter back through the artery. We're now withdrawing the export catheter from the distal part or the end of the artery back through the blockage and back into the catheter so we can eradicate the clot all the way through the vessel. Look how big that artery is. The bottom picture is a picture of the artery is a picture of the artery before we started and the top picture is after several passes to remove clot throughout the vessel and then an angioplasty or a balloon inflation in the beginning of the artery as you can see it looked like a little stub of an artery now it's a huge vessel so now that we're, we have blood flow down the artery we're going to finish the procedure by stenting the vessel and it looks like it needs stents in two spots there's a lot of clot there's, a, there's a, a, a large amount of what we call thrombus burden in this vessel. That's primarily because it's, a, it's an acute problem. This happened to him over the last couple of days, culminating in a prolonged episode of chest discomfort today. Uh, and as you can see, the reason for the prolonged discomfort today is that the artery was completely closed, causing a heart attack. So we went in and we, knowing clinically that there was a lot of clot in there, even though we couldn't see it, we went in and used the clot removing device before we got started. If you don't do that, you can really get into a lot of trouble with the vessel and have a very difficult time opening the vessel if you don't first remove thrombus. So we made several passes with the uh, thrombus removal device called the export catheter uh, and actually we're, had a very nice result. And now we're going to finish the procedure by doing it by stenting. That's after one pass of the export catheter. So the first picture is there, the second picture after one pass of just the clot, and then we made two more passes with the export vessel, uh, export catheter, and one inflation with a balloon in the beginning of the artery. And that's how we ended up with this. And now we're going to put stents in this artery. So we'll put the 3-0 distal, just at the crux. This is 3 by 15, mm -hmm. and we're going to put that right about there. The stent is, is deployed, crimped on a balloon, and we expand the balloon, which is what we're doing right now, and that will leave the stent in the vessel. The balloon will then come down, and the stent will remain fully expanded in the vessel. So right now we are forcing the stent, for lack of a better word, into the wall of the artery, with a high pressure balloon and in about 30 seconds we'll remove the balloon and leave the stent. The first stent we placed at the, in the distal most part of the artery which is at the end of the artery and this is the stent that will go in the proximal part of the artery. So you can see the stent material which is uh, a uh, stainless steel or a cobalt chromium alloy. They're the two different stents that we now use in, in, in coronaries and the stent is, is crimped on a balloon. You can't, you can't really appreciate the balloon, but it's under there because it's uninflated. What we will do is we'll put this stent in the artery uh, over that wire, and then we will inflate the balloon, which is under the stent, and that'll deploy the stent into the wall of the vessel, and then we will deflate the balloon and pull the balloon out, leaving the stent behind in the vessel. Now the stent is in there, and you'll see the balloon inflate, and the balloon is inflating. We're now removing the balloon, which is deflated. 
we use nitroglycerin to treat the spasm that can occur inside the artery when you are when you're working inside the artery sometimes that creates vasospasm or in the vessel and we're finished both stents are deployed the artery is wide open the flow is excellent and his heart attack is aborted so that's the artery before we started and the top is the artery following thrombus removal, balloon angioplasty, and finally uh, intracoronary stenting of the vessel. So it's actually a large vessel. They can be sometimes deceiving. Looks small when we started, but it's a very large vessel.